What's Hi. up, everybody? Welcome to Adobe Live. Uh, I'm Ryan. You might have seen me uh, just a half an hour ago here doing some drawing and painting, but now I am back with Hannah Jiang, um, and she's going to be doing some some awesome UI and UX work in Adobe XD. Um, what's up, everybody in the chat? Let's see who we got. Cars. We got Voodoo Val. What's up, guys? Beck. Beck. Welcome. Yeah. You guys are going to be witnessing some really, really cool work here in XD. Um, I am primarily a letter, uh, primarily, that's not even a word, primarily a lettering artist these days, but I actually started out doing UX, so I'm really excited to see what somebody who is really actually doing this work in real time uh, today does and, and the awesome tools that they have available to them to do this kind of stuff. Um, I'm really excited to learn some of that stuff myself. Um, and we've got an awesome, awesome person here as our guest to, to show us around a little bit on that kind of stuff. Um, we've got a, a, few, a full day planned here. Um, so let's take a look at the schedule real quick. Today on Adobe Live, we had some drawing and painting this morning, of course. Um, and that was with me, with my lovely host, Erica. Um, we've got the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge, which uh, Sam just talked about here for the last half hour or so. Um, and then we've got our Design Systems Live with Hannah. Um, and Design Systems, if you're not familiar with, and she can talk a lot more professionally about this, but uh, you know, it's about kind of getting your assets together, right? And, and kind of getting things um, so that Anybody who kind of touches it can use the same system to, to make something that's consistent, right? Cool. Um, so that's going to be going on. We've got a, uh, we have daily challenge that, that kicked off today. Sam was talking about that. Um, that's going on today and tomorrow as well. Um, today though, since that's just starting, we've also got portfolio reviews. Um, so if you are interested in having Hannah here, uh, review your portfolio. If you've got some some UX work that you're doing mm -hmm. that you'd love her to give some feedback on, or just kind of like, you know, give you props for for the awesome work you're doing, uh, be sure to submit those things, um, and we'll review those submissions and you know kind of talk about some of the portfolios that you guys sent in. So. Uh, don't be afraid to put yourself out there and submit those things. It's always awesome to get feedback, especially in a forum like this where it's free and, and awesome with somebody who is really an authority on the subject. Um, so cool. So in about 30 minutes, we'll be giving away a prize as well. Oh, wow. To one lucky person um, in the chat. So all you have to do is log in, stay active in that chat, um, and we're going to be doing an awesome giveaway of, what do we got? Sticker Mule stickers, right? A hundred Sticker. stickers. A hundred stickers, oh my right? god. Can you oh imagine all the computers you could cover? <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we're pretty minimal. We were talking yeah. about this with Erica too. We don't have a whole lot going on. But if you gotta have some stickers to hand out to friends, to include with, you know, things that you're shipping out, products you're selling, whatever the case may be, just using them as a business card, that's always fun. Um, you'll want to definitely stick around for that and get active in that chat. Yeah. All right. All so. Right. Someone said nice stickers. A shish. Are yeah. you talking about me or Ryan? Well, so <laughs> we both kind of got the same thing going on, right? We've got our yeah. Apple logos covered by a revealing Alice? sticker. And you got the girls of the future. I'm going to get one of those yes. for myself because that's so true. I <laughs> am happy to step aside and let the all the awesome women in my life take over because they do a better job anyway. So, um, but yeah, well, we've got some stickers going on, but we'd love to see what you guys do with some stickers. Maybe you could send them to us. We can, we can put them on our computers. Yes. Um, all right, so I'm here with Hannah. Hannah, would you like to kind of take it away and tell us a little bit about yourself? I think you've got some things to show us uh, to kind of kick things off here. Is that right? Yes. Awesome. Hey guys, my name is Haiyuan Zhang, and I go by Hannah. I am an experienced designer. Um, I do UX design as well as interface design. So a little about me, <laughs> thank you guys. Um, I was born and raised in a small town in the northeast of China, and uh, I moved to Beijing for college and got my bachelor degree in industrial design. Mm. Um, in 2012, uh, and my UX design career actually, I think, started um, in 2011. Back then, it was when I, uh, Apple just released iPhone 4S, and the whole world was crazy yes. about it. <laughs> and the uh, the mobile app market was like exploding. Uh, and back then, I was more interested in designing on screens uh, instead of both, uh, 3D objects. Right. So that's sure. how it all started. And after working in the industry for um, 
about six years, I realized that I needed to learn something new. But I wasn't able to do so by doing what I was doing back mm. then. So I decided to move to New York and pursue a master's degree in design te technology at Parsons School of Design. Uh, I saw some familiar names for Parsons. <laughs> Hi, Parsons King. Um, and I just graduated in May this year. Yay! Oh, yeah. Uh, that's my cat Kona, who looks, looks like he has clueless a tail. the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. <laughs> She's awesome. Um, I know it says that I'm based in New York in the introduction, but in fact, I just moved to California uh -huh. yesterday. Wow! Officially moved to California <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, big deal. Just moved all the way across the country uh, yes. after moving all across the world, and yeah. now you know just. Popping in here to do the next day. <laughs> wow. Yep. Um, cool. And I'm starting a job at Apple in about uh, three weeks from now. So I'm excited Congrats. for thank you yeah, for the awesome. new start and new life in California. Okay. So a little about uh, the work I've done uh, in the first six years of my career. I designed websites, uh, mobile apps, desktop apps, and a little bit of branding. But when I got to Parsons, you know, you had the freedom in the world to explore different mm -hmm. design areas. So I did some exploration in data visualization. So the posters you're looking at um, on the left, <laughs> it's like uh, mainly in the data <laughs> points. It's uh, participating Asian nations at the Summer Olympic Games through the years. Wow. You may think about why Asian, because if you want to list out all the countries, oh, it's just too time that, consuming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the one on the right, I believe you guys all know about it, is Milan Falcon from Star Wars mm. uh, with every part labeled. Um, I love designing with data. You just feel like it's like a combination uh, between science and art. Mm, mm -hmm. And As a uh, person who works with letters, I couldn't agree more. It's very, very important to yeah. get that uh, those that wording and that as part of the elements of the design, right? And, yeah. and it's just as important to think about what that looks like, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. For sure. And um, I got a little obsessed with stop motion. I shot the one on the left um, in my bathroom for a, for a night, and I'm quite happy with the result. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, uh, the the one on the right is a collaborative work with Harshal Larkar, who's a great filmmaker studying at Parsons as well and we're in post-production for that project. You know, my friend, uh, one of my friends from California, she told me, if you want to enjoy a high quality life in California, you have to, you know, find a hobby, like, mm. like you mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think I've found mine. That's a good one. That's a good way to like, fill some time, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a, yeah, it's a so painstaking detail and long work, right? But Yeah, the so first cool one, looking. like uh, the one on the left, I did it all in Photoshop. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of frames. <laughs> um, and also did some work mm. in research. Um, I started this project with my friend at Parsons, uh, Jenny Wu, in 2018. And we had this uh, class called Accessible Design where we learned what inclusive design was mm. and the fact that it actually could benefit the whole population. So Ryan, do you know that text messaging was actually designed for people with hearing disabilities? So. My brother-in-law is actually hearing impaired, okay. um, so I did hear that. But yeah, I mean, for the longest time before FaceTime and whatever, yeah. that was the way he could communicate, right? So um, super important for so many people and just convenient and fun for the rest of us, but really fundamentally <laughs> crucial for a lot of people, for sure. That's really cool. Yeah, so yeah, I had no idea. But like everyone is using text messaging all the time and we just take it for right. granted. And some other things like, you know, the curb drop on the street was designed for wheelchair and subtitles. So a lot of good examples that could uh, uh, prove that inclusive design actually benefits every one of us. Right. So it got us think, you know, why isn't it a bigger thing? You know, how can we make the world more inclusive? And we thought maybe we should make the design process more mm, inclusive. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of times people with disabilities were brought into the design process at the end, like the user testing right. phase. Um, so we hosted design workshops, co-design workshops with uh, people who are visually impaired or blind, and we co-designed digital products together. We created two apps. Oh. 
And we proved that、um, they can be great user experience designers as us. Yeah, they're awesome. Their users and their experience is very different yes, than ours, right? So totally not different perspective. taking that into consideration when you're doing it is like missing a huge, huge part of the process, right?、Yeah. Yes. And、uh, what they need is just the for the tools to be accessible to them.、Mm. So what you see in the picture is my、uh, partner Jenny. She's helping one of、uh, our participant、uh, working on a wireframe on a tactile tablet.、Huh. Um, But unfortunately, most of the、um, design softwares are not work working too well with screen readers.、Mm. So Adobe, as you guys are like the number one, <laughs> <laughs> number one on creating、uh, softwares for designers. Hopefully, in future updates, we can see more softwares that could work well with screen readers.、Yeah. Because you know, we actually we really could benefit from bringing those different perspectives to design community. That's awesome. Well, and, and Apple, I know, is one、uh, company that does a ton of extremely focused work on accessibility and stuff,、yeah. right? So maybe you can have a little bit of a, a inspiration on that as far as、yeah. the the hardware and the software that that they're putting out goes to kind of make that easier for for everybody else to kind of make that a part of their process too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what you're doing there exactly, but it's a good <laughs> place to be for that kind of thing. Yeah.、Um, cool. So we're also working on a podcast.、Um, it's called Inclusive Design Podcast.、Um, so we want to share what we learned from the workshops that we hosted, and also we interviewed people from the industry, like、uh, sighted designers,、um, uh, visually impaired designers, and also like、uh, professors and artists.、Mm. Um, And we're working on it, and hopefully we can release it、uh, by the end of the summer. So stay tuned. Yeah, <laughs> awesome! So exciting. I okay. Love, I've, I've podcasts have like totally taken over、uh, my ear time for music in recent years. <laughs> just,、oh, really? There's so many good ones out there. It's like you know,、yeah. you can't can't ever have too many good ones. So we'll definitely be checking out for that. So what about、awesome. today? What about today? So that's enough about me.、Uh, what are we gonna do today?、Um, so guys. Um, as designers, do you sometimes feel like we're a little judgmental, in, even in daily life? You know, you walk down the street and you see a poster of a film, or you eat at a restaurant and you look at the menu and thinking, I, I don't think the font looks big enough. <laughs> Something like that. I do that all the time. Yes. Like, do you guys do the same thing? I know I do. What about you guys? Because、uh, are you? Do you find yourself? Criticizing everything that you didn't have your own hand in. <laughs> Are you more accepting of other things? I think I think we're all pretty pretty judgmental in that way. Maybe not necessarily in a bad way, but we are considering all those things, right? Thinking、yeah. about how we might do things differently, for sure. Yeah. And、um, have you guys done design critiques on your own work from years ago? <laughs> <laughs> It's never never pretty. In my my case, I know for personal experience, yeah. It's a mixed feeling, right? Yeah. <laughs> like you feel a little embarrassed, but at the same time, you know that it's because you grew. Right. So that's why you think, okay, that could be better. If you look back at something you did six months or a year ago, and it's better than what you're working on right now, that、mm-hmm. would be worse. For sure, <laughs> I'd rather see a lot of growth from that time than than the opposite. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard not to be hard on yourself sometimes. Yeah. Oh, hello from Korea. Yeah, we saw Johnny said hi from China earlier too. Oh so we my got god! People tuning in from everywhere. We、oh. got a, a really inclusive、uh, chat here right now. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for going through all the firewalls and at three a.m. and <laughs>、oh、come、god. to see me. Yeah, that's probably very. <laughs> that's not an easy task of getting in here for them. That's good. Good. You gotta get some fans. I like <laughs> thank you guys. <laughs>、um, so keep that judgmental mindset. And what we're going to do today is to look at, take a look at my one of my past projects、mm. from two years ago. Okay. And we're going to judge the hell out of it. <laughs> yep. The、uh, <clears throat> the time has has come for Hannah to、uh, revisit some of those those past projects and see if she can scrounge up some positive things to say without、uh, beating herself up too bad. That's that would be me too. I'd be like,、oh, I would really love to fix this. <laughs> Good topic for discussion for sure. Yes,、so, I like it. Awesome. So,、um, a short intro about the project.、Uh, it's called Magnolia.、Um, I worked on it、uh, since from 2016 to 2017. So, have you heard about Magnolia? I actually、Living、have. In Texas. <laughs> I have. Yeah.、Um, 
I don't know how many other people will be familiar with it, but if you are at all into like DIY stuff mm -hmm. and, and TV about that specifically, there's a good chance you may be very familiar with it. Like I am, um, not even Texas related for mm -hmm. me, but that plays a big part of it. Yeah, so why don't you tell us about what Magnolia is? Okay, so for those of you who, uh, who are not familiar with Magnolia, it's a business owned by a couple, uh, Trip and Joanna Gaines, and they also run a uh, their own TV show called Fixer Upper on HGTV, and also available on Hulu. And they do remodeling and redesigning houses, super beautiful stuff. So cool. So when I was uh, working on their uh, the redesign of their website, they only had the e-commerce part on their web back then. So the first thing I did was to, of course, improve their uh, user experience um, for the e-commerce part. Uh, so as you can see, I didn't change the visual style too much because the goal back then was not to you know do a total rebranding right. just to fix some UX problems. Uh, so for example, some details like it, you can see I moved the add to cart button to the top because it does not make any sense that the user have to scroll down to see the main call to action button right. of this page. <laughs> it's an some, important part of the page. Yes, sure. <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, some other things like um, uh, write a review, which is a secondary call to action. You don't want it to compete with your main call to action. Right. So I um, designed it in a more subtle way. Super important, yeah, because I mean, you need that kind of hierarchy, right? Where yeah. one is more important than the other, maybe at least at first, right? Yeah. Yeah, Good you call. need to tell them, this is what I right. want you yeah. to click on. <laughs> <laughs> and besides this, uh, besides the, that work, I uh, also designed separate pages for the different branches of their uh, business. So they have an offline market uh, called the mm. Silos at Waco, Texas. This is super nice, I really want to go. And they have a quarterly journal called Magnolia Journal, and they publish books, um, they have the homestay business, all kind, all kinds of stuff. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know all that about it, that's cool. I knew, I knew that it was like brand they had as part of like their, their actual work that they mm -hmm. do. They're not just like doing it for TV, they actually do this work, and I knew that that was yeah. part of it, but I didn't know they did all that, that's awesome. Yeah, because all the designs were released about two years ago, okay. so it takes time for sure. people to yeah, <laughs> know <totally>. about it. <laughs> and uh, other than that, I designed their um, mm. iOS app called Magnolia Home. Uh, uh, this design was start, uh, scratch, start from scratch. Uh, as you can see that the visual style is actually a little different from the website. Yeah. Like the website has that warm beige background. I'm not sure if you guys can see it oh, uh, yeah. from yeah, the I screen. Yeah, I can see a little bit of contrast there, yeah. Yeah, and like they have the te next texture for their header. Um, but for Magnolia Home, our goal was to experiment with a new design style, which is more clean. Mm. You can see that I use a lot of uh, white space, um, a lot of um, straight lines and sharp corners, uh, simpler fonts there. So if you take a look at the current homepage, it's magnoliamarket.com. You can see that their visual style right now is actually more in line with this um, yeah, iOS It's kind of like <clears throat> taking that inspiration and kind of yes. conforming to be more like that. Okay, Yes. Nice. So after the redesign uh, was, uh, was launched, uh, I was told that um, we actually increased the conversion rate by about 500%. Yeah. Wow. And uh, they successfully attracted like millions of more visitors and users. <sighs> so that was a successful redesign. But, understatement. <laughs> but, but, being two years smarter now, at least, I like to think uh -huh. like that. Yeah. <laughs> let's, today, let's take a look at the pages that I designed for Magnolia and figure out if there are any problems with either the user, user interaction or the visual design, and let's come up with solutions together. I like that. I feel like I wish I could do this more often with my work. Like all of my work is very specific use case and like I do it for an advertisement or mm -hmm. for somebody's logo or whatever. And they're not really things that like go on and like living, breathing things like a website where you could kind of continue making tweaks and improvements. Like I don't yeah. get that chance. And that would be really <laughs> fun to be able to like 
revisit something I did two years ago and make those improvements that I see the, the need for and stuff. So this is good. I'm, I'm a little jealous right now, I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can take it as a new I hobby. Can, yeah, you know. I can do it. I can just, you know, work for free and, and <laughs> <laughs> fix all my own. keep in touch. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> okay, so, and later, if we have enough time, we're going to do some simple simple wireframing using Adobe XD to help us remember those design ideas. Uh, and also, instead of uh, just simply redesign the web pages, I want to actually move the content to Magnolia Home on the mm. app. Because, yeah, mm, for okay. now, they actually only have the e-commerce part. And let's enrich the content. And also, in this case, we can learn uh, about first how to redesign an existing successful product. And second, we can learn about how to design for different screen sizes. Uh -huh. So that's the plan for today. And uh, tomorrow, we're going to start with a recap, of course, and hopefully, um, after sleeping over the ideas, <laughs> probably <laughs> you guys can come up with something new. I mean, you never know. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll move on to visual design, uh, and we'll be using the sweet, sweet design system that Adobe XD has, and uh, we'll see how it could help us improve our work efficiency on a project like this. Oh, I'm so excited to see some of that stuff. <clears throat> um, and people in the chat are just saying, Kind of all the same stuff that mm -hmm. <clears throat> that I'm thinking right now too. Like, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the to hear that you had that kind of impact on their business is like, it's a really nice confirmation that you're doing something right, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, the decisions that you made, it's kind of hard to know. Like, yes, they might look great, but is that as brilliant a decision to move that that add to cart button up a little bit yeah. and make it different than the other one? That seems logically like the right idea, but. Is it in practice? And to know that absolutely, that is 500 times better <laughs> than <laughs> what we had before, um, that's an awesome confirmation. So yeah. um, it seems like everybody is kind of seeing the same thing, just knowing that that uh, is some kind of like, you know, encouragement to keep going and doing the same things you're doing and, and following those paths is, is really awesome, um, you know, motivation to keep going. So awesome. awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So, are you guys ready to judge? <laughs> I'm ready. I want to judge somebody else's work and not my old work. Okay, cool. Now I'm a little <laughs> nervous. No, it would be nice. I don't know any more than, than anybody here. Okay, so. so. <laughs> this is their current website. You guys can uh, look at my screen or you can go to Magnolia. Is it magnolia.com right now? Okay, oh, it's yeah. magnolia.com. <laughs> yes, and. So because we want to uh, redesign it um, on the mobile screen, so um, we actually have an e e-commerce um, section on the mobile app. So do you guys want to, instead of uh, taking a look at the e-commerce part on the website, or do you want to actually just you know, skip this part or um, just go to Magnolia Home app directly? Oh, that's a good question. What do you guys think? Do you want to see more of the app-based to... stuff or the web? <laughs> Judge mm. everything, or? <laughs> <laughs> now, did you design it all in the same? <clears throat> Goodness, I can't get enough water for this, this frog I have in my throat. They've been talking for like four yeah, hours. Right. <clears throat> yeah, it's true. I was on here for a little bit before, so that's not helpful. Um, but do you, I mean, obviously a lot of these elements are similar. A lot of the layouts and the imagery and stuff is gonna be similar. Do you work on them in the same environment, or do you treat web design differently in, as far as process goes than if you're designing for an app. Obviously, the, the layouts and the constraints are different, but um, do you design them all in the same environment? Um, by same environment, do you mean like in the same workspace? Yeah, like, yeah. Do you use um, like XD for app mm -hmm. focused design and then something else for web or you just do no, it all oh, in there? Not, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I use the same tool for cool. everything because right now they're all like, they all have different screen sizes for you to to choose, sure. yes, and uh, I will. I will say that I'd like to put the mobile screen on this side and the web screen on the other side, so you can keep them consistent, uh -huh. the design style consistent. But also, you have to always keep in mind that you're designing for different uh, devices. Right. So sure. what I do for <clears throat> mobile design, like I'd like to connect my phone with. Uh, the laptop and you can always preview on your phone because it looks completely different 
on your laptop screen yeah. and the real thing. Yeah, I mean, just seeing it <clears throat> in the context of, you know, that actual size that it's going to be and being able to manipulate it with your with your hand instead of a mouse because that's not how we interact with phones, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at least not currently. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> iPads are getting mouse support, I guess, but um, <clears throat> in general, yeah, it's a very different thing and, you know, not being able to touch and feel that on the screen is, is a kind of a disconnect, right? So that's good. Um, we've got like maybe one or two votes for mobile, uh, one or two for web, and a whole lot of everything. Yeah. Everyone wants to see okay, everything. Okay, <laughs> let's judge everything. <laughs> You're not gonna get off that easy. You don't get to cut one of the whole parts of it out. You gotta show okay. us all of it. So let's take <laughs> a look at the e-commerce part on web. So basically it still looks the same as what I designed, uh, except the background, the header and footer is different. Hmm. So what do you guys think? <laughs> I personally, I'll just start. You guys can can take a second to to chime in with your with your feedback about everything. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you just said that some of it is a little bit different than the way that you left it last, right? Okay, yes. so we got to keep that in consideration, guys. This is the live website, not necessarily exactly what she delivered when she was done. So. Keep that in mind. My first uh, thing that jumps out to me is kind of something you touched on before that you've got a lot of that white space and very clean, very nice grid layout on, on this, which kind of just naturally lets the, the content and those images really shine, right? Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of distraction around it to kind of take away from the content in those squares. It's just like a blank like art gallery wall for that piece that is that that square or that item, right? So I think that that is something that is definitely well done for sure. Thanks. What do you guys think? Let's see. We've got uh, let's see. We got some nice insights. Anything <laughs> else? Hi, Hannah. Guys, don't try to be too nice <laughs> on me. I'm strong. <laughs> yeah, she could take it, you guys. Um, it is almost chat and win time. We've got a few people that are very eager about this sticker chat and win uh, mm -hmm. thing. We've got a little over a minute, and we're going to start that. So before we go, let's see if we can get some some feedback on this site. I mean, it's I will say that in their defense, yes, it's tricky to to criticize this because it still looks very very good. I mean, obviously <laughs> it's, it's changed a little bit since you did it, but um, we have one piece of, of feedback. It looks like. Um, Chang Hoon, sorry about the pronunciation if that is incorrect. I'm just doing phonetically here. Um, mm -hmm. Says there's way too many fonts going on here. Yeah. So that may, I, I have a feeling that may have been something that was out of your control. Um, Are these not, the fonts that you, you ended up with? Not exactly okay. out of my control because I was part of the decision making okay. process, but they did want to have um, different fonts on their website. Like you see the serif font mm -hmm. as their title, and their logo is like a very rust, ru rusty style yeah. font, and we have this very like simple and clean type of font. So yeah, I do agree that in this version of design, um, this page actually is not the worst. <laughs> you can see later. <laughs> so this is like a, a good starter, uh, easy page to look at. Okay. Yes. Well, hey guys, um, we've got the chat and win happening now. Yay. You were so close to guessing when it was going to be. Um, so let's get active in that chat. Let's talk about um, about something. We, we, we're just talking about fonts, right? Mm -hmm. um, how many fonts do you guys feel like is too much? for a site to carry, um, and or can there be too much? I have an opinion as a letter person, but mm -hmm. let's see what you guys think. Do you think it uh, more the merrier? Um, keep it really simple and, and down to just a few or what? Let's get the get the chat going um, and we will, uh, we will have a winner here in just a minute. Hey. Hey. All right. So did you guys, we've got a lot of threes. Yes. I have heard a lot of that. Is that like an industry standard yes. type thing? Okay. I heard cool. about the same number. Yeah. And that seems like uh, quite a few. I mean, you can definitely, <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely pair um, numerous fonts that all will look together in different areas, but you get too many and it's, um, it 
affects like hierarchy mm -hmm. and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And clarity of where you're supposed to focus and stuff, I think. So um, yeah, I see a lot of three at most, definitely three for sure. Uh, you don't do more because it will get cluttered. Good, good call. It feels like everything's really disconnected from each other, right? Um, so yeah, it's great, great tips. Uh, I think that's right. We've got a winner, Kerwin Simeus. Simeus? Congratulations, Kerwin. Tell us I'm in the so chat, jealous. if you're there, what uh, <laughs> what you have planned for these stickers, if you don't mind, because um, we, need to, we need to decide if we're gonna be putting this on our computers um, <laughs> and giving you our, our mailing addresses. <laughs> yeah. But congrats, Kerwin. Thank you for participating, and everybody else for, for participating in that chat and win. Um, we're gonna be doing that again tomorrow. So, um, you know, there's no, no reason not to turn back up if you're not Kerwin and participate again, because- Come back. Yeah. Come back and uh, and let's do some more beating up of Hannah on her her two year old designs and <laughs> try and win some stickers because um, that sounds like an amazing time. So let's talk about the, these oh, fonts. Oh, Carbon showed up. Hey, all right. Congratulations. What? Thank you for participating. Um, yeah, let us know what you're gonna do with those. It's, I'm, I'm the curiosity is killing yeah, me. Yeah, looks like Ryan can really use a couple. I, of them. I'm very <laughs> very bare and minimal right now, but I would be open to uh, considering a sticker edition. If not, I was saying saying before this morning that um, my kids' bikes are covered with all my friends' <laughs> stickers and, and things that I get with you know products I buy and everything. They don't often make it onto my computer, but they mm -hmm. definitely find a home somewhere okay. around the house. So, um, thank you guys again for participating. Um, so we've talked about some fonts here and. It's, it's yes. tough when you have a specifically, strictly letter-focused logo like Magnolia's, mm -hmm. right? It's just a logo type, as we say. Um, and that has a very specific style. And this is an important point for me to interject with uh, an advocation for, for what I do. Um, this is where having your own branded font comes in really handy too, right? So if we've got this really awesome, very clean logo type that Magnolia has, um, it would be really nice if they had a branded company font that mm -hmm. matched that to be able to use as one of their three fonts so that the, the logo type doesn't kind of add a fourth or something, yes. right? So um, that's something for, for brands and people doing UX to keep in mind. If you've got a type only logo especially, that's um, could be really helpful to, to have a font to go with that. But um, yeah. what else? Uh, what, do you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on the fonts on here? Okay, so I agree that um, it looks like a little messy because there's so many different types and colors of uh, fonts and I think someone mentioned that uh, it's a little bit hard to see which one is selected because we uh -huh. uh, like we made the color very subtle it's a green with a check oh, sure. uh, behind it and in terms of user experience um, I think you know when you choose best sellings for example we can definitely use something, like if you go to other categories, we can definitely use something like a refresh or clear filter. Uh -huh, because yeah. what you can do right now is basically you have to go back to the sort by to view the, all the stuff. Okay. So that is not uh, super um, intuitive, I'll say. Yeah, that would not be my natural inclination to yes. go to sort by to get back to their Interesting. Yes, and also uh, a small thing. When you're looking at a product list that has more than one page, there's actually a page pagination mm -hmm. at the bottom. I think um, it could be better if we also have one on the top. So every time users want to go to the next page, they don't have to go through this long page. They can ah, just do it here. Yes. And also, it might be helpful to tell them how many products that we found for you in this category because sometimes, you know, uh, if you see, okay, only 20 products, I'll go with that. I'll, I'll just see, go just check out everything. Yeah. Browse, yeah. But if it's a thousand, you know, you may want to <laughs> <laughs> reconsider yeah, you know, uh, what you're going to do. Filter down a little bit more maybe with uh, some other categories if you can or whatever. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. Yes. That's a good point. So, um, yeah, I think that's what we could do to improve uh, this page. Uh, maybe the spacing here uh, could be bigger uh, because it's not in line with the, uh, the yeah. page title here. Um, and now let's take a look at the product detail page. We have a question from Lana or Lana. 
Um, if you have a way of telling me how to pronounce it, I'd be happy to <laughs> clarify for the record. But she says, um, do, you, do you know what works well using data? And I'm assuming that is a question in regards to the font count. Um, do you have any information? And I'm just gonna assume that for now and make and see if she's, she can correct me if she's talking about sorting and stuff. But um, we're gonna go with fonts. Do you have any information or industry knowledge and data that says what typically works best as far as font counts and stuff and how many to have? <laughs> <laughs> I would say no. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, I think it's, um, a lot of this stuff is so very fluid, right? Yeah. You can have like that increase in, in conversion with like, you know, changing things and watching how that affects sales. But um, yes. I think like font, it's hard to, it's hard to quantify that. There are like millions, hundreds of millions of fonts out there. It's just hard to say this one works better than that one. As designers, we just have to, you know, try it out and yeah. use your own eyes to see for the users which one works better. Sure. Um, but there are like some general um, rules, like for titles, you don't want to use something that is hard to read. You know, like I mean, for like websites in general, yeah. you don't want to use any like t artistic fonts that are hard to read. There's um, a lot of fonts that are better for print and yes, <laughs> and yes, for poster like, designs that's totally fine. Right. But for websites, people just want to be efficient, get the job done, and move on. You sure. don't want to, you know, want them to spend too much time on figuring out what you're trying to say yeah. here. It doesn't need to be like a study project for them to figure out how to use your website, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. So should we move on? Yeah, I like this. I like this page a lot. I like the the hierarchy of the um, the sizing mm -hmm. of like the the name of this particular product. Um, you've got your your rating, your star rating, and reviews. Price mm -hmm. is very clear and and kind of unmistakable. Add to cart button is right there. There's no no hunting for that. That's good. <laughs> you gotta you gotta be able to really easily know how to buy this thing if that's gonna be a successful e-commerce website yes. for sure. So, um, what do you guys think? Ready to see the next thing? I think I feel like this site, this page is pretty solid. I like the little drop downs and the the size difference of the fonts for the the little drop down areas and then the text within them. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a nice little little breakdown, clear information. That's good. Let's see. Thanks. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Somebody uh, Joel says that the less. Um, I think less they're fonts. saying the less fonts, the, the faster the site loads, right? If you're not having to build in a bunch of uh, mm -hmm. entire fonts into something for it to work on all computers, then that's just going to be a faster load time for sure. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, English fonts are like actually way more, way smaller than Chinese <laughs> font. If you have I like bet. three different Chinese fonts, then it's going to take forever. To it's going to be a, a little crawling website, huh? Yes. Yeah. No so oh, cool. let's keep going. Yeah. What do you guys feel about the reviews? Oh yeah. I like how there's like a, this, it's so common to see like a page that where an area like this is just full of ads and other <laughs> things that look like reviews and aren't uh -huh. and look like buttons and are actually tricks. Um, and I love this, the, the stark cleanness of this. I mean, I, I think that's, um, that's good. The, the different sizing of the fonts and everything seems like it uh, kind of makes it very clear what is the the title of this review and what's mm -hmm. the actual body of it and stuff. That's good. Yes. So here, actually, you know, uh, what I think that we could do better is usually we don't put paragraphs like in this full width of the mm, browser right. because um, it's proved that it's hard for people to read if it's so wide. Right. Um, so I think maybe, you know, half or 60% uh, width of this paragraph will be better. Yeah. I know personally, I am uh, I am terrible at staying focused with while I'm reading. It's mm -hmm. a big part of it's ADD, but, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you know, when you're going that long and then you go to come all the way back to the next line, it is mm -hmm. very difficult to yeah. Go to the right one. Yeah, right? and that's that having that shorter length is really helpful for that. Yeah. Um, Diego says the order of the elements is is quite nice. Uh, ah, and actually pointed out um, area length of of the text is a bit long. Yep. Yes, he was right on it. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a. 
carousel for products that you may also like. Um, is there, wasn't that up there? Was, did, I, did I see that wrong? Can you scroll up a little bit? This is like the single product page, right? Yes. Okay, so we've got, you may also like, um, let me see, if, make sure I didn't read that wrong. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. A carousel for products you may also like. Okay, yeah, so Sarah, it looks like um, that is there. Uh, it's kind of not visible from the, you know, above the fold area mm -hmm. up here to use a stupid, irrelevant term. Um, <laughs> but it is on there, right? So if, uh, if somebody's maybe viewing this in a, in a different aspect ratio I and see. different monitor that, that might show a little bit more too. So I see. Um, yeah, definitely a good thing to have on a product page like this. And, and it looks like it's there, so that's yeah, good. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Actually, I mean, when we go through other pages, there are problems with thumbnails um, for the carousel of pictures. Oh, so sure. we'll yeah. get into that. Cool. Um, and also, like the writer review is unnecessary, unnecessarily wide. So this part we can also improve. Yeah. On the website. I can't type that wide any better than I can read that <laughs> wide. I think it makes me think that I haven't typed as many words as I as I actually have, because <laughs> the lines are yeah. I'm taking up less lines, and then I realize I've written them a novel, and they don't want to hear it. So. And those kind of space makes you give you a wrong feeling that you have to put in a lot of like putting an article. Sure. But it actually just want to say, you know, I love this thing. Yeah, it feels like you haven't <laughs> done enough, right? Yes. <laughs> You're shaming them for not putting enough effort into their review. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the product detail page. Um, now let's go to inside Magnolia. Let's start with the silos. Uh, con probably wrong. Yeah, that's a Vietnamese pronunciation that I'm not going to get right. Um, uh, said this design makes me feel that the this isn't a real review. Um, okay. So that's a kind of an important point, right? Because we we see things a certain way a lot mm -hmm. of the time. Um, and if we see them done in a different way, sometimes the styling of that, while it may look really good, mm -hmm. may not feel like the thing that we're actually looking at, right? We talked mm -hmm. about sneaky ads and tricks uh, being used to make it look like the thing that you're actually looking for when it's not. <laughs> um, in the same way, kind of the thing that you are looking for can sometimes not feel like it is what it's supposed to be if it's designed in a different way. And mm -hmm. I wonder if you think that that is a bad thing or if you think that um, what do you think the balance should be on doing something unique and something aesthetically pleasing versus something familiar and something yeah. that uh, is more recognizable as what they're looking for? Yeah, I think for uh, beginners as a user experience designer, it's hard to find the balance because sometimes you just want it to be super awesome yeah. and when people look <laughs> at it and they I'll do something different. remember. Yeah. But I mean, later, if you have more experience later in your life, you kind of, you know, get a feeling of the balance. You know, it's not necessarily, uh, they, they don't necessarily conflict to each other. You can, at one one time, on, on, one, on one hand, you can make it, you know, all user-friendly, everything is readable, all right. spacing is good, all, uh, like, no super um, flashy colors, and at the same time, being creative, um, and make it unique. Sure. I mean, it's a balance that you have to, I mean, I'm still learning, but sure. it's a balance that you Gosh. will uh, get to know later, like as your experience, um, yeah, get, I mean, you get more and more experience. And it's constantly changing, right? It's changing so quickly. That yes. was kind of the big struggle that I had when I first started out um, trying to learn web design and stuff, is that mm -hmm. it was right at the time when responsive design was really kind of taking oh, yeah, off, yes. and so like, I was trying to learn the most relevant thing, but also not having any of the foundation, <laughs> the basics. So it was kind of like, it was like drinking from a fire hose and everything was moving so fast and it was hard. And then I found lettering and I'm like, phew. Um, but uh, I think that that's, there's benefits in both sides, right? Something yeah. that's very familiar and really in line with like the, um, the guidelines that you're supposed to mm -hmm. generally follow for like a certain platform or something. Um, and having that all be right where people expect it is great for usability, but then, uh, you know, it provides you less opportunities to really show off and, and do something that's visually appealing too. So finding that balance is, is something that I guess just comes with a lot with experience. I'm, yeah, I'm and if you feel like designing interfaces are, is a limitation to your creativity, creativity, you can always, you know, 
get a hobby. Yeah. Like do lettering. Do some lettering, <laughs> do some print design or something yeah. and flex those skills there and uh, and do something that's best for the user on the on the UX side. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, good. Yeah, good feedback, guys. I think um, one of the other things I saw pass by there too was um, mm -hmm. uh, images of the product on those reviews too. That would be kind of kind of cool. So they know, um, you know at a glance what it is they're reviewing. Helpful for somebody that's, well, I guess that's on the page of that product though, so. Okay. Um, unless they mean like Amazon style where they you can upload your own photo of your version of the product that you got. I don't know. Um, that's kind of a nice thing. I, when I'm shopping for something on Amazon, seeing somebody else's yes. photo yes. of it can be helpful. You know, if the images aren't great or if they look like too perfect and seeing yeah. it in real life can be helpful. So. Exactly. They all have like professional photographers <laughs> right. and professional yeah. light settings. Or sometimes very much not. And it's <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I think this is the thing that I want, but it looks a little crazy. Like, <laughs> is this what I want to spend my money on? So a lot of it's cheap and they do good returns. So. Yes. <laughs> what are your favorite fonts, Poor says? <laughs> favorite fonts? I mean, I like the standard fonts, like Apple San Francisco fonts. Solid. Uh, Roboto from Google fonts mm -hmm. and Helvetica. They have so many different um, types, like thin, extra thin, and bold. Yeah. I mean, you can basically create anything using those fonts. And system fonts are as far as a usability standpoint are, are awesome, right? Because yeah. almost everyone or literally everyone is gonna have those. So there's not gonna be any you know, hoops you gotta jump through to make sure that it looks right on people's devices or computers. Um, so that, that goes a long way too. So that's good. That's a good call. Yeah. Uh, I see a vote for DIN. That's a fair, fair point. Um, Diego says he's curious why did you feel like encasing the footer width-wise, seeing how many elements it contains? I didn't catch the footer, let me see. Let's see. That's way down there. Oh, okay. So like uh, everything is kind of like very full width and you know allowed to breathe across the the width of the page here, mm -hmm. the window that we have, but the footer is contained for having so many things in it. Um, was that a conscious decision? It looks like it kind of aligns with like the the width of the body yes. parts and stuff, which is is good, but. Yes, I mean, except those images that it's like mm. the full width, take the full width of the browser. Yeah. Other than that, the content are all in line in this header and footer That's width. True. Voodoo Val's on it with the timing, 42 minutes until portfolio review, guys. If you oh, guys wow. want to uh, <laughs> to check those out, let's uh, get them submitted. We would love to, uh, to take a look at them. It's gonna be exciting. Cool. Okay. Okay. So let's I, this one, uh, keep this going with really our cool. judge. I love this uh, the images there. I really liked that one image where the sky kind of blends into the background. Mm -hmm. Like I think there's maybe like just a slight hue difference, but it's very very close, and it looks like it just really kind of becomes yeah. a part of the the site, which is really cool. It's a nice shot. So for this page, I'm not in love with the the notification style that I use here. I think they want to differentiate from the top sure. uh, banner, but yeah, we can definitely do something better than that. Um, so this page kept the uh, the design made uh, from <laughs> two years ago, basically the same. Um, a lot of different font, <laughs> as yeah. you can see. There you go again. Yeah, um, <laughs> the clutch, I like it. Uh, it's uh, easy to read, it's nice. Um, the alignment here could be uh, yeah. fixed, and here it bothers me. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's like a a strange, strange thing. And I know a lot of times <laughs> it's like certain characters, you know, contain different space just with the way the fonts design, and that can be hard to counter for in web design, but. Mm -hmm. That one looks like a pretty clear one that could be done better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's probably the developer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not your fault. That's Not for my sure. fault. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you guys realize that um, in front of the food truck name, there is like a small arrow, which I think is a strong indicator that this content is interactive. But yes. when you hover over, you realize, oh, it's actually not. So I remember designing uh, detail pages for food trucks, but I think they somehow decided to take those down, but they kept the, the little arrow here. Ah. I think that's like something that we can um, reconsider to mm -hmm. just, you know, don't let users confuse. Right, yeah, I mean, that absolutely. It looks like a, a very common, commonly used character for putting in front of a link if you don't want to yeah. do like underlining and stuff like that or color difference that's a great way to indicate here's mm -hmm. a thing you can interact with and you can't. So that's um, that does seem like a 
a little bit of a trick, not, not for yeah. anybody's benefit, just like a, <laughs> a leftover, like you said, from a previous design that ended up not being what it ended up being, right? So yes. Um, Lana says, uh, do you have any data, like a hot jar, showing the way visitors shop? What are they searching for most? What is the most common path to the shopping cart? Um, or do you even get some of that information as, as, as actually, your role I, with this? Actually, I cannot get those information. Gotcha. It's actually very, uh, usually companies are very secretive about those data. That's fair. Um, yeah. But what the feedback that I can receive is it seems like our user cannot see this, or it seems like our user is going to another direction. Mm. Um, so they'll give you like what they feel is relevant information yes, from that data. But okay. yeah, um, usually you don't get access to the backend of those data right. yourself. And I guess it depends too on uh, the structure of how you're working with the client too, right? Like mm -hmm. if you are the designer working with Chip and I can never remember her name. Um, Chip and Joanna. Joanna, yeah. Yes. Um, if you're literally talking to them and you are the professional that they are exclusively talking to to get all this right, um, that might be a scenario where you would be more privy to that information mm -hmm. and they would, you know, kind of share that information with you. Whereas if you um, were doing this as part of like a, a company or something like that, or yeah. you were contracted to do this kind of thing, then a lot of times maybe you skip some of the, you miss some of those steps of getting direct access to that kind of stuff. So I think mm -hmm. it's all, yeah, it all depends on on how you're, you structured in your work for somebody, yes, right? How um, involved you can get. But it it's helpful me, to know that. Stuff. Yeah, it, that, it's definitely helpful. I mean, it reminds me that um, I worked for startups. So actually we use Google Analyze mm. as like, um, uh, a data tracking tool for websites. I think they have like a free plan for smaller companies. Okay. Um, that's something if you're interested in looking at the data on your website, you can definitely go check it out. Cool. Um, I think I'm there's another uh, thing called Hot Jar or something. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, Lana mentioned Hot Jar specifically. Yes. Yeah, okay. I, so that's a good I tool. I used as well. it on my portfolio. It's interesting to see, you know, someone, you know, you design this long, beautiful page of your portfolio <laughs> and you realize people just scroll down a little bit and then. Uh, <laughs> super interesting. Yeah, that's I mean, always that's, the case. That's good information, right? Because yes. if, if you if everybody's bailing before they get to the good part, then you got to move the good part oh. earlier, right? Yes. Yeah, good call. <laughs> uh, cool. So I think that uh, aside from some alignment things, yeah, there's that cool image mm -hmm. that uh, at least on this display we're looking at it. Oh yeah, okay. There's a little bit more of a contrast, but it still looks awesome. Um, yeah, the, the little photo grids and stuff, you said that was from like the previous design? Yes. Okay. I, I remember you had uh, the top of this page, I think, yes. up next to something else yes. that you did before. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it definitely looked way better in like the, <laughs> the square <laughs> grid and stuff. But, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta take some and lose some, I guess. But uh, yeah, I think that um, aside from, from those kind of like seemingly random choices, this the overall vibe of this page is, is pretty solid. You pretty haven't good. finished the whole page. That's true. Like what we mentioned, uh -oh. if you have a beautiful long page, but people just <laughs> <laughs> abandon yeah. you I haven't halfway. seen it. Ah, oh, this is good enough. I like, <laughs> this, I like this page. Yeah, so this is a super long page, actually. Yeah. Um, so this is the one I talked about. There are just so many different styles of fonts here. It's definitely could use some redesign yeah, here very, in this very area. Yeah, this page, for sure. <laughs> Yes, so it's the location and our information for their offline market. Um, and also below the map, they are parking information. They have a free trolley going <laughs> around the district. Um, and also safety warnings for the rail railways. Oh. So I, I don't know what you guys think. Um, I feel like those three information um, is also related to this map and just like the right. locations. So is there, maybe there's a way for us to associate those information with the map and make it interactive. Uh -huh. So um, so you don't have to scroll up and down and see, oh, is this, uh, I'm, you're looking at my screen, it's bigger, but on smaller screen, you have to scroll up and down to see, oh, parking lot is on 8th Street. Where yeah. is 8th Street? You that's have to big, scroll up That'll be see. a big spatial difference if yes. you're on like a, on our computers, right? Because yes. that's, um, you can kind of, kind of get close to seeing it all at the same time, but just barely on this mm -hmm. big, big monitor for sure. Um, now is that, I have a question about mm -hmm. this map. Yes. The text on the left. Yes. Part of the image 
or live type? I think it's live type. Oh, okay. Yes. That's cool. Yes. I thought it was going to be like this put is... in the image because you know sometimes you've got oh yeah so like that yeah. is not not type so whoever designed this this map graphic. I did. Okay. So you, <laughs> that's a good thing because you know what fonts you're using everywhere and everything so that's good. Um, that wasn't a criticize. The map looks awesome, but sometimes if you've got assets that you're using mm -hmm. that are that have you know typography and, and different fonts and stuff, mm -hmm. who knows you know whether that person's designing that knows that they're going to be adding an 18th font onto yeah. this page <laughs> if they yeah. don't use one of the ones that you're already using. So um, <laughs> anywhere where you can use some some live type and stuff, it's you know of course being selectable is good too, but. Um, yeah, I think something more interactive could be could be definitely big. Maybe some yeah. tool tips or something like that to kind of click on certain things and see that below information in the context of the of the map. Yeah, cool. what do you guys think? Do you do you like to interact with um, things like this, or do you like um, kind of like some clear, uh, you know, hierarchical written out information? Do you like to to be able to play with it a little bit and kind of poke around and, and learn by exploring, or do you like to have it all really spelled out for you in general? I guess it could be contextual too, depending on what it is that you're actually looking at, whether you prefer one thing or another, but let us know what you think. On the icon, it's right up here, the necessary information. Okay. So, yeah, we got some suggestions mm -hmm. um, by making the map interactive by hovering uh, uh -huh, the mouth yeah. over. Yeah, that, that could be a way to solve this issue. Yeah, we talked about the tool tips maybe, you know, right? Like a, kind of like a tool tip anyway, like a, yeah, a hover interaction where you kind of explore by just moving around the map. That way you don't have to know to click or something. <laughs> you don't have to put big buttons on there, right? It can just kind of be something that happens naturally. They discover it while they're just kind of scrolling yes. over it, right? Yeah. And, but we have to keep one thing in mind that we're going to design on phone. So hover is not a thing on our phone. Ah, so see, that's the is, limitation of a hovering. This is why you have a UX expert to talk about this stuff. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta like tap everything. If you're popping things up on accident while you're scrolling, that's not yeah. necessarily a great experience. Hmm. Exactly. Good call. And here is the carousel that someone, I think it's Lena, someone mentioned before oh, yeah. on uh, the product detail page. Like I'm using a, a very big screen um, again, um, but if you're on a smaller screen, you have to you know scroll up and down to see the image, the bigger image and the, the thumbnails. Yeah. So that could be changed. Uh, I remember, I think in my original design, I put the thumbnails on the right side. Mm -hmm. but... You got plenty of room to play with there yeah. horizontally, that's true. And also I would um, add a, like a small pagination dots okay. uh, somewhere, yeah. just, you know, just to let users know how many images there are and which one they're looking at. Right, yeah, because we've got the arrows, but no indication of like, if this thing is gonna take all day to look through. Yeah. <laughs> There's like four things and we yes. can kind of see them all already. Yeah, yes. that's a good call. And then that should probably, or not should, I'm not gonna say anything should be a certain <laughs> way, but um, could be helpful for that to be a little bit more dynamic and responsive to the to the viewport, right? Mm -hmm. So like if you're looking at it on this giant display, mm -hmm. it's filling it nicely, but if you're looking at it on a smaller one, maybe it yes. shrinks to still fit in there, right? So yeah. that's kind of good. That's actually a good point. I mean, when you're designing for a desktop, it doesn't mean that, okay, you're good to go. You still have to uh, think about different screen size, different devices have different screen sizes. You mm. have to think about it. Oh, so you think it's nice that your button is like slightly above the edge of the screen, but someone who has smaller screen may not be able to see it. For sure. So be careful with that when you're designing for web. Daniel makes a point that I actually like quite a bit. He says, um, um, from an accessibility standpoint, yes. text and images is never ideal. And that's, um, that's really, it's yeah. kind of been a very popular trend of a thing to do over the last few years. Like even, yeah. you know, kind of boilerplate sites and stuff and, you know, templates and stuff mm -hmm. like to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Background image, big header image, yeah. text or title or whatever on top of that. Um, but depending on what your image is, what your font yes. color is, right, that can be very difficult for some people to, to see or for anybody to see True. For, for that matter. This one's all right. Um, but you know we've got right. some we've this, got some darker yeah, shades this one in that photo. Could be darker, uh -huh. yeah. um, uh, definitely. And or this even one like is a good. shaded background yeah. box or something. Yeah, I, I remember I put. <laughs> 
shadow, but it's gone. <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. Cursed you again and said like, you know what? Let's make it difficult for her to show this in a future Adobe Live <laughs> session. <laughs> She's gonna be showing this off someday. We need to make her look uh, questionable at best and, and put her on the spot. Uh, 30 minutes until the portfolio deadline, guys. Get those portfolios in, actually less now. I'm reading, I'm just reading the, the reports from Voodoo Val in the chat. Uh, she was keeping me on my toes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, 28 and some change minutes to get your portfolios in. I would love to see those and I would love to hear what Anna says about them as well. Yeah, so. guys, don't be scared. Just because we're being super picky on my project <laughs> doesn't mean that we'll do the same to right. you guys. So. And you guys are probably way better anyway. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got a drop down menu. Is that what we're looking at right now at the top? Yes. I'm okay. just actually trying to navigate to another ah. page that we're going to judge. Cool. <laughs> so let's, let's go judge to check out Joanna's blog. So this design looks completely different from yeah. what I made. Uh, oh. Whomever, <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, different. <laughs> whomever, uh, whomever was working on this project, I think they did a great job. Um, it's gorgeous looking. Um, we have like a featured article on top, mm -hmm. Joanna's photo. And we got this nice um, filter here. So, but can we do something better on this page? Oh, it's really hard to see on the screen, the gray oh, background. Oh yeah, there's some contrast. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys can see it in, on your, I'm guessing it's just based on your screens. You should all see it the way that we see it on our screens. But um, on this monitor, for instance, it mm -hmm. looks like it's totally solid background, but there is some, some framing and some yes. some background color on these boxes that does set it apart a little bit. So if you can't see that, there is that. <laughs> so that's another thing to keep in mind when you're designing, because if you're using super subtle color contrast, some people may not be able to see it. Right, and sometimes that's really important too, because I I didn't even realize it because I was just looking over here, mm -hmm. um, but not being able to see that contrast, um, it kind of, one of my comments was going to actually be that Joanna's photo on the right there yeah. uh, seems like it could be aligned differently yeah, with the image exactly. to the left, but, and you guys are probably already ahead of me on this because you're looking at it on your actual screens, mm -hmm. but the actual white backgrounds that are part of those elements really make things very nicely aligned and grid, and it totally takes away from the fact that the images themselves might might be able to be aligned better. It doesn't feel as off as it did yeah. without being able to see that. That's a good point. But yeah, accessibility standpoint, um, yeah, so you know, don't some people use... <laughs> may not be able to get that, that benefit of that. Yes, so don't use subtle contrast on important information. I mean, in this case, it's okay. I mean, people may think, you know, the alignment is off, but it doesn't matter. They can still read the content. Uh -huh. um, so what I will do here is simply adding a all option here. Like, so when users go to check, you know, all the posts about garden, they can easily go back to see all posts in, instead of, you know, they have to click on the back uh, um, arrow on the browser. Yeah. It's a very um, small thing. And let's take a look at this cute post. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm still not very familiar with the, the all shortcuts. All the things they've done with it. Oh, <laughs> shortcuts. So as you guys can see that this width is actually very good for people to read. It's very nice. Uh, the font size is good. Mm -hmm. Spacing is good. Um, I got photos and videos. Interesting. So the the body copy on this page is mm -hmm. definitely handled a little bit better, right? Yes. Um, I think it's the latest design. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that does definitely makes a lot of difference. I mean, people were pointing that out. We talked about it. You brought it up. Other people brought it up. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely, um, it makes a big difference to get a little bit more of a line height and a little bit shorter yeah. line length, right? That um, goes a long way. It looks cleaner. And it, sometimes it can feel too like you're, you're not utilizing enough of the space. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of reasons why that is definitely not the best thing to fill the space, right? <laughs> uh, giving it room to breathe and, and kind of uh, guide you where you're supposed to be looking. It can be a lot of times very much better than trying to fill space for sure. Yeah. Um, we got a couple good questions here. Kerwin, sure. our, our sticker champion, um, <laughs> says, do you ever work with your client if they plan on using original photography on what types of photos will work best on the site, AKA shoot for web? So um, do you, uh, I don't know about this specific project, mm -hmm. but do you ever get to kind of be a part of that decision-making process of what they should aim for in their photography for a specific thing, so, uh, part of the page? Okay, so for a part of 
photos, of course, they are like all gorgeous, uh, nice looking. Yeah, <laughs> What's yeah. that? <laughs> yes, uh, but for like what we just saw, like uh, the banners, um, I remember I was shared with a photo full of photos, um, images. Okay. So I got to choose that whatever I think that works. So you had yes. some options to work yes. with. Okay, and if there's none that you think could work with uh, what you're going to design, you can always tell your client. Uh, maybe they can arrange, you know, another shooting in I don't know future. Yeah, if you say like, listen, I can't use any of these stupid photos for your banner. I'm gonna need you to try harder, and then they can <laughs> go back and get some better photos. Then you can do that. Well, so do you yes. um, do you find it uh, difficult to kind of work around what they have? Do you like, you know, kind of having a little bit more say in how that stuff works? Or are you just kind of trying, customers always right, let will just work <laughs> with whatever they have? I mean, I think um, the photographers that they have are great. Yeah, they um, seem to be pretty Yes, <laughs> and I think that they know that they're shooting photos for a website. So sure. sometimes they do have that mindset that, okay, this is uh, a potential banner photo, so they will arrange like a lot of uh, white space um, as part of the photo. Uh -huh. So I will say that it's not that hard, but I think it's a good point. I mean, for photographers, uh, if you guys were watching, <laughs> it's always good to be, learn yeah. about where your photos will go um, and keep that in mind that maybe we want to add text to it and maybe you want to make the background darker or lighter so it's easier for the website designer to work with totally yeah and i think um you know we talked about things being used over images too so um taking photos that are framed with plenty of like simple background as mm -hmm. a part of them rather mm -hmm. than like being really focused on say this building down here if that was like yeah. a, just a really tight shot of that it would only be able to be used in a scenario like this not yes. as a header or something yes. right um so yeah definitely something to keep in mind for sure i think um anytime you can have more you know just ongoing communication with mm -hmm. a client on anything whether it's branding yeah. advertising web design whatever um being in constant communication just only ever helps i think for sure yeah. so um Avani says could you discuss how bad or good it would be to use different shades of gray maybe She's just, uh, or I assume she, sorry. They say, I'm just <laughs> beginning with design. And you talked about the background. Yes. Um, so we talked about contrast and stuff mm -hmm. in a usability standpoint. So yes. I think there's a lot to be said for for simple neutral colors uh, mm -hmm. and what they do for highlighting the focus of yes. the page. But um, yeah, I think we kind of we kind of talked about that a lot you yeah. know, as far as like the contrast. So that's the important part. I do love using light gray as a background mm -hmm. and using white boxes on top of that. It just looks super clean it does and look modern. Good, for sure. Um, but as we discussed, it may not be visible in some screen, but it's fine. It's not like a critical problem, sure. um, like for accessibility um, stuff. Uh, and for fonts, I do like to use a dark gray instead of a black. It just it looks more like a warmer, slightly warmer, uh, not too sharp. Um, it looks nice on a white background. Um, and other than that, I do not usually use like the medium gray for anything, mm. um, except you know something like um, like those kind of uh, secondary level. Metadata uh, and stuff. Yeah, and yeah like okay. it's not super important, but they have to be there. Uh, maybe you can, you can use like a, a gray uh, in the middle between sure. black and white. You don't want them to be distracting, but you know, also not invisible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's that's kind of probably a good point to make is like when you're thinking about grays and shades and contrast mm -hmm. um, for background elements and stuff where they're not crucial to the information, mm -hmm. maybe less important. You can kind of get away with less contrast yes. there, but when you're talking about text on backgrounds, yes. we want that contrast to be a lot stronger there. Definitely. Um, and you mentioned using black for, for copy and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, headlines and stuff, awesome. Um, but as a type and lettering guy, um, that contrast of 
total black on white or even you know light grays. It's, hard on it's harder on the yeah. eyes. That's right. Um, the readability goes down a little bit, but also just it strains your eye more. Um, mm -hmm. Just having that strong a contrast. So where you want something to really jump out at you for shorter pieces of text, like a headline or something, awesome. But for people reading an extended chunk of stuff, you want to keep that little less of a of a stark contrast for sure. So um, have you ever turned down jobs? Tima says, um, and I think yeah. before I forget it and it goes out of the page, uh, Stanislav says, uh, can you please name these fonts? <laughs> I think that might have been at least the second time they asked that, okay. so I wanted to make sure I didn't <laughs> let it go by again. Um, Don't worry, we're okay. going to name all those fonts tomorrow <laughs> when we get ah, to visual design. Cool. Because so you got to right tune now, back in, yeah, Stanislav. We have some other focus today. Uh, and Tema, of course, I have turned on jobs. Um, I was working as a freelance designer for like a, a year and a half. Mm. Um, and maybe, I mean, for starters, probably you want to add this thing to your portfolio. So you basically just take everything sure. that you can get. But mm -hmm. as you have more experience, I believe that you know, sometimes you are more picky on right. the projects that you're going to get. Um, Maybe you know something you are interested in. Um, I had a client who's working on the uh, app that could analyze your skin, like to see how how the your, the skincare products that you're using is working or not. Uh -huh, so that is a super interesting project yeah. for me. So those kind of projects uh, kind of just got my attention. Um, and also sometimes you get to interact with the client themselves and you get sort of get a sense of, you know, if I want to work with this, with this person or That's not, huge. right? <laughs> <laughs> At the bottom of my contact form for yes. a long time, I've had the last question is favorite whiskey because I don't really care what their favorite whiskey is, but mm -hmm. if they respond with, I don't drink or like <laughs> whatever, then I know that that, that part of it doesn't matter to me whatsoever. I don't care if you don't drink. But if you don't have a sense of humor to, to you know, appreciate that that's on my contact form for a professional uh, business uh, storefront or whatever, then, uh, you know, I can kind of get a sense right away of some kind of filter. Like, okay, this person might be a little bit of a dud to work with. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they don't have a great budget, maybe I'll think twice about, <laughs> about working with them. Um, but that goes a long way, right? If you can kind yes. of gauge what how this person's going to be work with, that's a huge part of it for sure. Um, yeah. And sometimes you just need the money so you can do it. Yeah, I mean, for, <laughs> uh, for beginners, I would suggest to just take whatever that you're getting because it, either it's a good experience or a bad experience, it's important that you will learn from right, that. Right. And especially you learn a lot more from a horrible experience, <laughs> right? You know what to look out for next time. Yes. You don't want to work on this kind of project or with this kind of client that gives these these signals right up the front. Uh, <laughs> okay, those are red flags. I'm going to not talk to people that <laughs> say those things next time. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great question, Tima. Um, I, again, assuming I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and you know that's it's something to think about. You know mm -hmm. when you've when you've got the the luxury of being able to turn some things down. Um, yeah. It's, in my experience, it's always always ends up not being something you regret if you've like yeah. kind of kept your plate a little less full um, for something that you weren't f really fully excited about. It's it's never been something like oh, I wish I had taken on that job I was kind of interested in. It's never, ever happened. So um, yeah. if you get to that point where you can be a little bit more picky, then that's uh, it's a great place to be in for sure. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on <laughs> to this blog detail design. So there's something else that I want to uh, mention here. So they sort of hide all the comments from this post. Um, I would like to just put a couple of popular comments out there, just to let the readers see, you know, who, uh, what other um, users are thinking about. Mm, sure. I mean, maybe just engage them so they can leave a comment here. And another thing that I found is, you know, so you can actually interact with other uh, users if you click reply mm. and it jumps up and you cannot see this person's comment oh. anymore. So that is not very user friendly. And this cancel uh, button link is sort of um, hidden. Yeah. It's hard to discover. 
So that's something that we can do differently. Other than that, I think this page is very well designed. Yeah, it looks like what it's supposed to supposed to be. Um, yeah, I love the the treatment of the of the copy and stuff. So that's good. Mm -hmm. um, Munir, please ask your question again. I'm sorry I missed you a couple times. Um, sometimes okay. it seems like they're going very fast, and then I look and I see something familiar in the comments and. <laughs> and I realize it hasn't moved as much as I thought, so uh, you may have gotten buried by chat and win or something too, who knows, but uh, definitely want to try and answer your questions. Um, you too, Brian, if I've missed anything. Um, he said he always uses dark gray for the font. That's uh, such subtle detail that he didn't think about, so. Um, <laughs> how to avoid procrastination in the last phases oh, of right. the project and how to avoid perfectionism. I did no notice your comment, actually, and I kind of that's taken awesome. a special that's note true. of it. That's, that's good. Because, yes. um, oh God, I know. Do you work for yourself completely, fully independently, before yes. your, next, your next thing? Yes. Um, OK, so I have two. And procrastination is one of those things that is, that mm. is so, so easy <laughs> to get, get yes. fallen victim to. Um, what do you do to, to, kind of, to kind of fight that? Especially as you're, I think they said earlier on, like, especially when you're getting towards the end of a project, right? Like sometimes yes. those last little details can be so difficult to power through. You're so close, you've done all the exciting stuff, and now it's just kind of like the, the last final, like kind of annoying part sometimes, yeah. right? How do you deal with, um, with the urge to procrastinate and put those things off instead of just finishing it and getting it off your plate? I see. I, I mean, it's not a, the biggest problem for me because... Um, and it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on work, I don't procrastinate too much because you have a deadline there. And especially as an independent designer, you know your reputation is everything. Sure. And usually, like, the projects you're getting are like recommended by your former clients mm, or your former right. clients came back uh, because they want something, they want you to design something else that they're working on. So be very, I was very, I was taking care of my reputation. So I was always on time, never miss a deadline. Um, and why do you want to avoid perfectionism? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> one of the, you know, the quotes that I try and think about all the time is perfectionism is the, what the, uh, the enemy of being done. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I uh, but yeah, yeah, being a perfectionist and trying to get every little detail it right is. is often more than you need to be doing and yes. not helpful, right? So how do you how do you fight the urge to keep working on something forever? <laughs> <laughs> because you have a deadline. So um, and sometimes you just have to consider, you know, the developers how difficult this will be for sure. them. Maybe we'll only have two weeks left before this project to launch. So this will be a conversation uh, between you and the manager and the developers, you know, how we can make this work without sacrificing too much on the user experience or yeah. visual design. Um, and yeah, I hope we answered your question. Uh, it, when you have the urge to procrastinate, think about your reputation, think about your career, and perfectionism, don't try to avoid it, try to embrace it, okay. because it helps you as a UX designer, sometimes it does help you to put the attention on those details, because mm -hmm. details really matter in terms of UX. There you go. I feel like I'm getting a master class here too on, uh, <laughs> on being, uh, being responsible and disciplined. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna... I get very distracted by my animals, and uh, when it's summertime and my kids mm -hmm. are home, it's like okay, all all structure goes out the window <laughs> a little bit. But uh, no, that's good. That's good points, you know. And when you're talking about user experience, right? Like mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about with UX. It's not just visual design, right? We're talking yes. about the experience, and a big part of that experience is sometimes how quickly those users can get that better experience, yeah. right? Their experience is suffering the longer you procrastinate and take on the project. So keep that in mind. Yes. Well, thank you for the question. Yeah. All right. We got ten minutes until portfolio Ooh. reviews. Get those submissions in. Send in your Behance portfolios. There should be uh, a link there in the chat for for getting that if you want to participate. And uh, and we'll get it. We'll get a couple chosen here in ten minutes, and we'll we'll take a look at those. Cool. And we need probably need to hurry up a little bit on judging this website. 
So now we're on Magnolia Journals page. Uh, it's a quarterly journal. Yeah. Um, at the top, you can see, you can see that this image. I remember there was like a little back and forth on the image that we're using. Yeah. Um, I think they shot this image specifically for Banner. So you can see there's a lot of white space right, yeah. uh, that you can work with. Um, that's nice. Um, subscribe, renew subscription, call, main call to actions, good. Um, a little words from Joanna. Okay, the alignment here could be fixed. And here as well. Ah, uh, okay, sure. And uh, yeah, that's a little bit off yeah. to the left there. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a bug or something. Yeah. Uh, and the spacing here um, is a little too close. And the fonts here, like we see like three, four different right. styles in this corner. That's Throws off that that level of importance, right? Because mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, some of that, the hours and stuff is kind of like some, you know, metadata kind of thing where it's mm -hmm. like less focused and you want people to be able to see the number and call or whatever. But um, yeah, it feels like that could be handle a little bit better, especially that spacing between like headline information, yes. call to action, and all that stuff. Definitely. And another thing here, you see they have email lists mm -hmm. and they have general inquiries email, <laughs> advertising email. <laughs> and <Huh. laughs> so yeah. if you just want to ask, you know, can I do you guys um, deliver to Hawaii, then which email will you choose? Did you click this button or do you mm -hmm. click here? So that's a little Confusing, sure. right? Because like something... that stuff could all be a part of a <laughs> an, a single element or a single uh, kind of zone at least, instead of totally different layouts and design of that yeah. for sure. Uh, Val said um, she finds that perfectionism isn't something she can just turn off. So going the opposite direction and embracing that, like you said, would uh, without allowing it to take control is great mm -hmm. to keep in mind. And that's that's good. I mean, yeah. we don't want to start slacking on our work and <laughs> like doing a mediocre job just to get it done, right? I yes. mean, it's perfectionism as a excuse to never finish something isn't great, but caring is very important, right? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, another thing, you just find balance. It's like the balance episode of, of Adobe Live right now, right? All, everything is a balance. Yes. Good to know, yes. good to keep in mind. All right, so the, the FAQ down here. So this is another uh, very yes. common element of a website, right? An FAQ. So let's let's talk about how we handled this. Yes. Yeah, so as you can see, it's oh, interactive to save the space of the bottom of the page. But uh, what we can do better is, you know, it's not very obvious that those are clickable. So, but by simply adding like a plus sign or like a down arrow, yeah. that will be much more clear what they can do with it. Um. And is that blue uh, element? It's, is that part of the? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it. Yeah. It's probably a bug or something. Yeah, I'm wondering if that happens for everybody or if that's like a, I don't know, that's weird. Yeah. Interesting. And but yeah, definitely not obvious that those things live under there, right? You need some kind of like a drop down icon or indicator yes. and stuff for sure. Yes, exactly. And <laughs> that's it for this page. But what I would do as you know, what we want users to do on this page, we want them to spend money, right? right. We want them to subscribe or renew their subscription. So those are very important interactions. So I would put another, um, just put them on the bottom of the page again, mm. just to remind all oh, those are what you can do on sure. this page. Instead of having to go find them again, you know, after doing a great job and exploring yes. the whole page and not leaving too quickly, um, you should get rewarded by not having to review the whole thing again to find what you <laughs> to act on, right? Yes. Good point. Uh, Daniel says, uh, you know, that about perfectionism, mm -hmm. negative or positive depends on the context. I think that's that's you know yes. exactly right. True. I mean, we're we're talking about uh, you know kind of finding that balance again and, and the zen, as Charles said. That's a good good point. Um, and you know, just kind of you know balancing everything off, like uh, tossing Gamora off a cliff, like Kerwin says for all you uh, um, Endgame fans. No, Endgame, what was that? Infinity War. Infinity War. I think. Anyway, sorry, my nerd is uh, not <laughs> not sharpened as, as sharply as I'd like it to be. One thing I wanted to point out personally that I yes. noticed on this page, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily about this page itself necessarily, yes. but um, 
just in the context of what we've been looking at, mm -hmm. is that all these different facets of their business, this this same brand, yes, everything looks so different. I know. Right. Yes. Okay. So that's that's you know, obviously they're different areas of focus, different products, mm -hmm. different focuses of each of those yes. pages, but maybe a little bit of uh, totally tie-in between those can yes. could be helpful, right? Totally yeah. agree. That's what we were talking about, balance. I guess yeah. that's the theme of it's today's a balance. life. It's a balance, it's a balance So day. you have to find the balance. You want them right. to look like they're all Magnolia companies, but also you want them to look slightly unique yeah. um, to differentiate them between each other. So that's the balance that we need to find. Yeah, it's almost like there's there should be some kind of system that you could use to design system. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll be here. All, uh, well, I was gonna say all week, but just today and tomorrow. But that's good oh. enough, I think. Uh, spoiler alert: Josh says that's right. Uh, little tease. Oh, sorry. We're not talking about what we're doing tomorrow. We're talking about uh, Marvel Universe. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kerwin, for spoiling the three-year-old movie for us. Um, okay, so. What else? What else are we looking at today? We have okay. anything else to pick so apart? We only have three, four minutes left, right. so we have to really go quickly. Uh, but um, guys, if you find anything um, that you think could be improved uh, on Magnolia's website, let us know. Sure. And we can probably address those problems tomorrow if we don't have time today. Yeah, I mean, because we're, I mean, this is all, we're just looking at the live site right now, yes. right? So, like, if you guys want to poke around and, um, and take some notes, do some homework, and come back tomorrow with some feedback. Uh, you know, it can be hard to watch what we're doing and check it all out yourself. And seeing it in your own browser and your own mm -hmm. size and everything could be really helpful for finding um, some of those things that we might want to point out as as good feedback. So uh, yes. yeah, definitely check that out because this is all this is all the way it is right now. So mm -hmm. we're all looking at the live stuff. So cool. Three minutes portfolio submitters. Minutes. Yes, let's do one more page Hi. from Magnolia Homestay Business. So you can see this banner is not so bad. They have this mm -hmm. white curtain on the left where you can put your dark gray text on. Um, so there's like a little introduction on Magnolia Day, a few tips. And then they have three houses. I think all those houses are from their show, Fixer Upper. Oh, upper. interesting. So they decorated okay. those houses and they turned them into like a hotel thing that you can book huh. and stay. Cool. They're super large house, um, by the way. Like the big old Airbnbs or something? Yes. <laughs> um, or not Airbnbs, but uh, like B&Bs. <laughs> Yeah, so let's huh. see what happens with ClickBook now. So that's another jump, which is not very user friendly. Mm -hmm. um, I know they're using like a third party uh, plugin or something for this, but there's definitely some improvements that we can do. Um, so as you can see, so Ryan, when mm -hmm. you're booking like a house or hotel to stay, what, what do you care about the most? Um, King size bed. King size bed. At least if I'm traveling with my wife, we gotta have yes. our space because mm -hmm. uh, we love each other very much, but we can't be cramped in a queen or smaller. Um, mm -hmm. So that's very important. Yes. <laughs> but that, think though, about if you're going with seven of your friends all together. Ah, interesting. Yes. Um, I would not do that. But <laughs> <laughs> if I were going to, I'd want to see. I want. I want to get a feel for. If this is going to be enough space for us, right? And that's yes. you know maybe something hard to do mm -hmm. in photos. Like, how do I, how do I know what is there and if that's going to accommodate us all? Yes. Um, I mean, exactly. First of all, the location is very important. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to book a hotel <laughs> in Texas when you want to visit San Francisco, right? Yeah, that's not going to be helpful. Yes. So, <laughs> super important information uh, before users click book now because book now sounds scary. You know, uh, it sounds yeah. like a lot of commitment. Am I going to have a, a a moment to back out if I, yes, if I choose otherwise. Exactly, yeah. but we want them to know all the important information before they click on the button. Mm -hmm. So things like location, um, how many people that can live there, right. how many beds that they have, baths and parking, all this important information. I think they are more important than like a short introduction right. of how beautiful this house sure. is. And it's great, but yeah. Yeah, and also <laughs> I think this area, I'm not sure if it's super necessary. Hmm. Um, I mean, even just put them like this size of image yeah. will be big enough for people to just take a glance at the house and see if they like the style or not. And if they want to look at bigger images, you can always put like a like a plus sign or or just let them click on the uh, image sure. and do a pop up yeah, get a gallery for them, yeah, for them yeah. to go through. Um, 
And also another small thing, uh, one last thing that we're going to talk about before we do portfolio review. Did you realize they, they say like 12 people mm -hmm. and seven birds? <laughs> it means that mm. I did the math. There's five double beds and two single beds. So I know this is a very <laughs> this small detail, but I think it matters when you are planning a trip with like eight of your family members. Yeah. You know, sometimes you could, this couple could sleep together, but sometimes you just have to have different bedrooms for different person. So, I mean, it's never yeah. too much to offer those information to yeah, I mean, users. You gotta, have, you gotta have the details, right? You know, maybe only two of these people are on a sharing a bed level with each other <laughs> in their relationship. <laughs> if it is friends, right, and not family, then that becomes a lot more of a interesting scenario that you gotta think about for sure. Uh, Vlad's is commenting on your use of Safari on desktop. Yes. Uh, apart from people who work at Apple stores, this is where he always sees it. Now, I will say, I use both, mm -hmm. uh, Safari and Chrome, mm -hmm. because sometimes Safari doesn't work great for some things, I will yeah. admit. Um, <laughs> however, Chrome is super resource intensive and I don't like using it if I don't have to. So I yeah. use Safari primarily myself as well, especially for general browsing, but for a lot of like web apps and stuff, sometimes I gotta, gotta bust out the Chrome, but. Uh, interesting observation, Vlad, for sure. Yes, <laughs> and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say so. I don't use Safari that often. Ah, okay. Um, so it works just, very just well reuse. with Apple stuff, sure. um, but I usually I use Google Chrome. But as we're doing a live, I don't know how to turn off my <laughs> browsing history. <laughs> Aha! Not <laughs> so, enough time to, to figure it out before. Yes. Yeah, okay, so enough. Safari it is. So maybe some of those little glitches and, and little bugs on the site are Safari's problem and not your, yeah. your work. But sure. sometimes Chrome doesn't work and you sure. try Safari, it works. It's all, it's all a charade. Yeah. <laughs> we're all just living in this world that we're subject to their, their whims. Uh, but you know, yeah, interesting, interesting point. I think um, when you're testing and stuff, do you prefer a specific browser? I mean, I know you said you use Chrome mostly, but yes. um, is that usually a, a better environment to to kind of play around and, and fiddle with things. Yes, that's true. But sometimes you want to try try both, especially Safari. Yeah. Because it has more bugs. I don't know. But <laughs> it's like it has problems yeah, sometimes. I guess I guess the rationale is, you know, you don't want to let things in that aren't fully fleshed out and, and solid and, and secure yet or whatever, which, you know, fair enough, but um, it makes using some of the, the funner elements of the internet a little difficult sometimes. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're getting off track. So yes. I wanted to say too, you know, we, you talked about the um, the book now button, right? Mm -hmm. Very early on the page, mm -hmm. um, which is great. But again, we're talking about finding this balance between getting it early on the page because that's what you want people to do ultimately. Yes. You want to hit that book now button, um, but it comes before all the most important information. Exactly. So you know, whether you got to work in that information first while also having it kind of close to the top or something you get it you know it's a yes. tough tough call on, on where to put that stuff so that's yeah. kind of you know super important and design decisions yeah sometimes like the words you use on the button matters like add to cart ah, sure. people know that you can just click on it and no money will be taken from your bank account <laughs> right. but book now like sort of right. make you nervous a little how bit? much of my information do they yes. already have and how final is this button yes. press that i'm going to do that's a good point book now seems a lot more uh, you know, kind of serious than like mm -hmm. learn more or <laughs> something because that that might take you to the same page that you're looking looking to do or like uh, you know, I don't know what else you would put in there. But yeah, it seems a little little final and like crossing a threshold that you maybe aren't ready for yet for sure. Okay. Awesome. I thought I would, would be able we would be able to go through all the pitches that I planned, but okay. you guys are awesome. There are a lot of good feedbacks and I feel um, like we're covering a lot of very questions. good like general. Uh, elements that we're going to mm -hmm. want to be talking about tomorrow anyway. So yes. whether they exist in <laughs> different ways on different pages, we've kind of like covered a lot of really good stuff to talk about. So yes. that brings us to our portfolio submission deadline. It is a big zeros on the live there. So we have some portfolios that we want to review, I think, right? Let's see here. Portfolio reviews. Let's go down here. Cool. And let's see what we've got. Let me find those here. 
Um, what questions do you guys have based on the pages that we have talked about so far that while we're getting these portfolios pulled up to show you guys, um, what else did we not talk about right now that you've seen as we're going through pages and things mm -hmm. um, that we can kind of talk about while we're pulling these up? Yeah, and okay. also what do you guys, tomorrow we're going to get our hands dirty and we're going to work on visual design. No time for wireframing. <laughs> we're going to use the design system to create a visual design of those pages that we uh, go through today. But let us know if you guys want to see something else or you want to see us to maybe do design critique on some other part of the website. Um, let us know in the chat. Um, and also I want to thank you guys for your support. And I know some of you are in Asia, which is like 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. So I really appreciate your yeah, support. There's some people tuning in from, from some very difficult places to tune in from time-wise, you know, yes. restriction-wise, all kinds of crazy stuff. So good, good for you guys. Thank you for coming. Um, do we have any, anything in there? Do we know? Any portfolio submissions? Do you have the link for that? I do. I have the, uh, the doc. Let me refresh and just see if I'm missing something. There should be such a link with uh, all of these. Uh, da, da. So I can try and it up. Cool. Um, so Cynthia yeah. is asking which design system is um, something we can use in Adobe XD. We'll be creating one tomorrow for this Magnolia project. Nice. I can't wait to see this. Um, there's so many things that, like, uh, when Hello I was from Europe, <laughs> when I was trying to. Uh, figure out how to do this stuff and I was designing. So I don't remember if I just talked about it on, our, on my last live or with you, but mm -hmm. um, my first design thing that I did was designing a BlackBerry app. Oh, it was around wow. that same time, like 2008 <laughs> or no, yeah. it was like 2010, I think, early 2011. BlackBerry was still kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> and there was no good oh Twitter apps for it or any apps really, honestly, but mm -hmm. um, I designed a Twitter app just in Photoshop um, and then found a developer partner to put it Check together. Email. Check my email. I will. Um, and so I found a developer partner. He helped me build the thing and make it actually real and all that, which was cool. Um, That's awesome. But I've never designed for BlackBerry. <laughs> yeah. Well, you didn't, you didn't miss much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but because we had somebody that was kind of focusing on the look of things. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's what I was on. Um, We'll see. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get there, y'all. Um, so, but uh, yeah, so like having something like XD or anything remotely like mm -hmm. um, any of the tools that are out there today yeah. was just so far in the future at that time. And yeah. um, just being able to prototype anything, it was literally pulling up screenshots on, yeah. <laughs> on your device and just kind of seeing what it would look like in that space. There's no interaction, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I guess you could maybe do like a PowerPoint presentation. I don't know. I don't know. It would have been bad. You know what? Actually, this Magnolia website, okay. I created the whole like website and app in Photoshop. Ah, yeah. I think back then uh, Adobe XD um, hadn't came out or they were in beta. Yeah. So I was like, Happy with the Photoshop, you know, you, they they su finally supported um, different artboards on the same yeah, cameras. Yeah. yeah, just that is is huge. It's a, yes. it's a huge help for sure. But and the yeah. smart objects. <laughs> Man, yeah, I mean, it's um, there's there's so many ways to to do this stuff now that it's like, I don't mean, take your pick, but um, yeah, <laughs> any of them would have been great at the time. And just the fact that we've got these these super awesome tools is, is amazing. So, okay, I've got my portfolios pulled up, you guys. Um, let's take a look. So first, we've got Jamal. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna open this up. Okay, and I'm using Safari too, before everybody comments. <laughs> um, great for oh. browsing Behance, I will say that. So, here we've got this awesome portfolio here, and we've, mm -hmm. we don't have a ton of projects, but we've got some some very interesting looking ones from, uh, yeah. from just a general portfolio perspective here. So uh, take it away, Hannah. Let's see what we got for, for him or her. Yes, let's. Oh, I, I like the profile, like the photo and the background. It's, it's cute. Yeah. It gets my attention immediately. Gives uh, me a little Pac Man vibe. Yeah. <laughs> and the, we've seen a lot of uh, white backgrounds today. So let's True. check out the first project. Yeah, the here you want to drive? Sure. My settings might be different than yours. That's always my experience. Nobody uses things like I do. Mm -hmm. 
Here it goes. All right. Okay. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Oh, wow. Magical service. Now, this is right up my alley because I I wear black most of the time. Mm -hmm. I buy products that are that are black. It's it's definitely kind of goes through everything in my life pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so this looks cool. Yeah. It's hard to find a, a well done, very dark interface though, right? Like a, even Apple yeah. is just now <laughs> at a dark, dark mode, mode to things because it's hard <laughs> to pull off. But, you know, when you're talking about True. text and contrast and accessibility concerns True. and everything, like it can be tricky to see what's going on here, even on this screen right now. Yeah, this It's is hard to see nice. some of it um, because mean, the of the purple. resolution. Yeah. I think the background is like a dark purple and oh, uh, he used, I think so. And it, looks a be. it does look like it's me. got a little bit of a hue to it. Yeah. Nice. And here, the button, the color is very nice. And the white text is still readable, which yeah. is nice. Um, color contrast is great. Like the and sizing. The spacing and spacing yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. well, all the fonts are readable. And there are not too many different <laughs> font <laughs> types. Yeah on the same page, Doing so pretty good. that's great. <laughs> yep, we got some new number fonts coming in here. I don't know, be careful. Okay, here, <laughs> so I guess, is, is this interactive? Is it supposed to be interactive? Because I think this one is slightly more brighter than others. Mm. Does this mean like maybe when you hover over? I'm not exactly sure, so the interaction here could be slightly more clear, I oh, guess. Sure. Um, how we're supposed to. When well, there uh, could be some movement. Thing. And that right on the on the yeah. actual interface, it says you know there are images right on Behance, so it's um it's hard to say exactly what that's doing, but um yeah, it's a good point. Probably yeah, I love the phone that they're using. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. Oh, we got some data the viz. Map. Yeah, the map looks nice. I assume those will be animations like bling bling. Yeah, you got your little city city yes. tooltip things there. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of seeing some of that purple in the background there. It's definitely yeah, right. It's definitely a very uh, cool gray. If not, if nothing mm -hmm. else, it's uh, it's definitely on the on the cooler side. So I see some L'Oreal Epsom. There you go. Um, I have like a mixed feeling about it. Um, like, it depends. Like sometimes you just use placeholders, but sometimes you are the one who's looking at those wireframes, so mm. it doesn't matter. But if you want to, say, communicate with your client, sometimes it's important that you put um, relevant text instead of a uh, Laura Epsom. Sure. It definitely will help um, whomever is looking at your portfolio or this wireframe that you are creating better for them to understand what you are trying to do here. Mm -hmm. And they can kind of imagine themselves actually using this, right, rather than like... Yes. Okay, yeah, I understand this is all like temporary stuff. Like that feels less like something you want to really buy into, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to kind of like pitch this design or this this UX yes. interaction with, with a client, yes. um, getting them to, to be able to really visualize it and you know, mm -hmm. in more of a real way, it can go a long way in kind of selling your, your decisions, right? Yeah. And on your portfolio as well, you want people, although it could be, you know, some practice project that you worked on, but sure. you want people to feel that it's so real. Yeah. So yeah, not, not by hurt, replacing mm, the text. Like making something up. Right? Yes. Yes. So make, just make something up, like something that you think makes sense and put it in there instead of use a uh, placeholder text. I yeah. think it's, um, it's a trick. Yeah. No, yeah, that's, that's really, really strong. Um, yeah. Vlad says, imagine doing you and you and... Imagine doing <laughs> UI and Keynote. Mm -hmm. um, fun story. Um, I've worked for Apple for a, a time as well, and they actually prototype a lot of Apple software in Keynote, including Keynote itself. Um, I love Keynote. Is prototyped in Keynote. It's actually really a pretty solid key, uh, prototyping tool. Yes. Um, but uh, you know, it's you know, it's it's got its limitations. Obviously, it's not made for that. So there's that. But uh, but yeah, I mean it's. It's not. Uh, it's free software if you have the computer, at least. So you know, yes. it's something to think about. But um, yeah, it's uh, definitely not the best thing out there for doing it, especially, especially. Gosh, especially <laughs> when you have a really extensive design system that you're working with. Mm -hmm. It's not great for that. That's for sure. Yes. Definitely better tools. But some like quick and dirty rapid prototyping yeah. is yeah. nice. Somebody like me who just wants to like trick somebody into thinking he has an app or something. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. I mean, overall, this is a very nicely yeah. designed uh, website. Yeah. 
Um, I, I can't get over that. I, I think it's eyes probably. It's like it kind of seems like uh, like Cookie Monster eyes. eyes or something, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting a real Pac-Man vibe based on the other guys around him mm. uh, <laughs> floating around there in gray. <laughs> Very cool. Well, good job. Um, yeah. Do you want to take a look specifically at any of the other ones? Um, any other projects? Or do we here? have to try We've got some another others. one. Yeah, we've got some, I think we've got some time here. Let's see. Um, let me go back to, oh wait, here we go. It's just right here. Cool. Let's oh. go. Okay. Richard. Richard. All right. So oh, now we have yeah, very Kingdom. exact opposite, right? We've got yes. the white background, very minimal styling on there, which is nothing wrong with that, that's yes. for sure. Um, so in general, um, maybe add add a little bit short introduction of yourself sure. so we know what um, your focus is on. Um, so I see it's probably like branding or... Um, like magazines design, yeah. publication design. Sure, so what's yeah, it looks like it. Um, let's go check the first one. Oh, the animation is so cute. Oh, Back I see. smile. A little CMYK action going on there. Yes. And this, wow. Ah, it looks this like it might nice. be a publication, huh? It's so cool. I really like that. Reinvented. So here's another scenario. Uh, like we, we talked earlier about Magnolia's logo type and it mm -hmm. being very. It's very nice and clean and minimal, just the the letters, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then not having the font to go along with that for use in other things like headlines maybe or whatever, that it just is one more letter style that is going on on mm -hmm. your page, right? Um, and I feel like with this one, you know, we've got these letters that have been designed for this, or maybe it's a font that they base that on, whatever. Yes. Um, but they also have that to be used for yeah. taglines and copy stuff, which is, you know, I think it's a nice, nice nice branding element for sure. Good yeah. photography. Yes. So we just presenting like a photography or like a publication design mm -hmm. uh, because I, we were just talking about you, you don't want users to scroll up and down to see the full piece of the work. So I'm not sure if that's um, a thing for displaying, you know, graphic design work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just slightly uh, bigger than the browser. So maybe it's, if you think it's better for people to see the full image of your work, um, you can reduce the size of the photo a little bit. Yeah, that's a good point. But other than that, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's really hard, especially when you're dealing with static images, right, to kind of size them well for, you know, use on all, or for viewing on all devices, for sure. But, oh, here we go. Um, yeah, yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. Yeah. Okay, so these are like, uh, you know, rather than publication covers, which is kind mm -hmm. of what the vibe was before, now we're looking at some really nice full-size images and a really cool So I guess we're both um, lazy viewers because we didn't read the <laughs> Well, I'm glad we didn't bail on, on the page before we got to the bottom, right? We're, we're being good uh, good observers on here. On top, so there's another tip here. Just do not expect people to read whatever you're writing on top of the project. Like, let it speak for itself. So a little, like, we're, um, like, title separating all this work will be nice. Just tell us sure. what it is because we were judging it um, from the perspective of, you know, is it a poster? Right, is it like a right. cover magazine? It may not be what you want to present us. Yeah. If then, this is a, a subway ad, yeah, then this it's killer. Is awesome. I mean, not that it's bad for anything else necessarily, <laughs> but I mean, knowing that after seeing this, this view, it's just like, oh, right. Yeah. Like yeah. having that image be the focus of this thing is like, it makes Total sense. And then having the pertinent information at the top for the people that are drawn to this and mm -hmm. want to see more about oh, who is doing this really awesome, colorful ad. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's facsimile. Let's see more about them or whatever. Totally. Yeah. And there's a lot of comments in the chat. I know you guys are loving the colors too. So cool. Yes. And copywriting definitely makes you a better designer, Flav says. I agree. <laughs> you don't want to just make beautiful looking words and images. You want to be able to tell stories that create images with, with awesome words. How about that? Okay, cool. cool. Great, great um, job on this project. Let's see what else we got here. Some other branding stuff. I really wanted to see this guy here. This Coast, Coast Branding. Nice. Okay, that's the name of the project. So now we know that it is a, a brand focused project. Yes. Ooh, interesting. What is it? I think these are bottles. <laughs> rum. Yeah, they're, they're nice. rum bottles and they kind of just really just blend into that background a little mm -hmm. bit. Is it on um, purpose? Right, I, I'm wondering the same thing. Like maybe, I mean, it kind of seems like that's the the idea is to 
kind of say like this is this is from the earth. This is like you know mm-hmm. a reference to this beautiful landscape, uh, whatever. Um, maybe a little bit more of a, a visual separation from it, so it doesn't yeah. get lost. And you know, because these are, I mean, if this is like a real bottle design or whatever to be made one, mm-hmm. um, it would be very unique and very cool. Yeah. You got like the, the gemstones in there and like the the shell and everything. Really cool That's concept. Nice. Um, a little bit more of a even just like a shadow behind those. I mean, that, that would be the the quickest, dirtiest way to do it, but some kind of like um, work on the photo in the background, maybe to kind of like, you know, highlight different areas and kind of make those pop off of that background a little bit more. Because mm-hmm. it's doing a great job of conveying that message of, you know, this is like from, from the nature. This is like yeah. inspired by this beautiful scenery and stuff that totally comes across. But then, you know, yes. being able to see a little bit more clearly the awesome actual product design too would be really cool. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, very unique. Awesome. Why are the reflections blank? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I think maybe in the the subway photo, those uh, those ads were like reflecting onto the the shiny uh-huh. floor, and they were actually not reflecting <laughs> the design, which is like fair got point. Got some yeah. more picky eyes. <laughs> yeah, we've got some very observant <laughs> folks in the, in the thing there. I love those glasses that they had up there yeah. too. Yeah, beautiful. It looks very nice. Very cool photography. Nice. Nice, cool. Fossil whiskey stones. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, cool. That was really neat. They had like things in them. Yeah. I've got whiskey stones, but I tell you, I um, I've never drank my whiskey slow enough for the ice to be a problem, <laughs> per se. So um, having things that don't melt isn't really a primary focus of mine. But mm. um, good to know for people that um, that do yeah, care. Yeah, that, that's a problem. And like for to me. babysit a little bit. Then, it's yeah. I always I, at the end <laughs> I can't see the eyes. That's right. Yeah, where did it all go? I took too long. That's my fault. Okay. Cool. Well, good job, guys. Thank you guys for participating in the portfolio reviews. Um, tomorrow, instead of instead of this, since we've got our design challenge underway, we'll be we'll be talking about that kind of stuff um, mm-hmm. tomorrow instead. Um, but thank you guys so much for for sending those in. Uh, it's no small thing to to be able to you know put your your work in front of however many hundreds of people are are viewing this the stream right now. It's a big big step and yeah. Uh, commend you guys for for having the courage to do that. That's awesome and great, great work. Keep up the awesome work. Um, Like Hannah was saying, definitely get those profiles really fleshed out um, with as much information as you've got to share, right? Tell a little bit of a story in your your side bar there so that when somebody comes and they see this awesome work, they can quickly learn a little bit more about you and, and maybe know where to go next with um mm-hmm. you know with trying to contact you for work and stuff especially so um you know the more information you have available to to fill that space in the better so yeah your social links all that stuff cool cool all right so we have no time left we have how about no that time left? we've got like what three minutes two three minutes two, two minutes. minutes awesome so what what um last things you want to leave people with today before we we break for the evening and come back tomorrow ready to get dirty into this design and <laughs> fix some of these things that have been bugging you for however long, two years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I just want to say it again. I really appreciate um, first Adobe to uh, for having me here, um, and you guys are awesome today. Um, we, I thought we could uh, do more, like do maybe a little wireframing, but we didn't get t- time to sure. do that. But yeah. we got a lot of uh, uh, great questions. I think. Um, it's good um, to share. I, I feel great to share those experience with uh, with you guys um, because I have a lot of uh, friends who are just starting as um, uh, UX designers or um, graphic designers, and I know it could be tough uh, as a beginner. Um, but believe in yourself. I mean, all the things That's that right. you feel painful of doing will make you a better designer. That's right. Um, and I think a lot of the important thing to, to note about what we're focusing on here with UX and stuff is that mm-hmm. such a big part of that is the, the design thinking part of it, right? Yes. And kind of going through and talking about why these things are working better than others and why this doesn't work and why this inconsistency is, is hurting us, that kind of thing, before you ever even dive into the actual work of, of making that thing itself. So um, I think today is a, a great great example of how that process should go, really, is kind of picking it apart and figuring it out before you dive in and fix it. 
So, yeah. um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Thank Hannah, you. it's been awesome. Um, and thank I look you. forward to talking to you again tomorrow and to seeing you guys as well. Thank you guys yes. for being awesome and active in the chat. And come back tomorrow so we can see how this thing uh, shakes out. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's awesome. Thank you guys so much and have a good rest of your day.